I was hoping you would play a compliment. What do you think? Well, I've thought about it. Having got Ricardo's request, I looked at the piano. My stepmother's image oozes from it. A phantom sitting at the chapel's piano. Even now, I'm still her prisoner. Suo-san? Suo-san? The voice calling to me distorts me image of my stepmother. I shake my head and force a smile. Let me think about it. Okay, I look forward to singing with your compliment. I am thinking to avert my gaze with a carefree smile. I notice my Yuri looking at me with a pain glaze. Pain glaze? Pain gaze, even. Ah, lastly, I need to tell you not to spread a rumour. We won't try a ritual if you do so. Promise? With her hands pressed together and smiling, she looks at me like an actual saint. Her lapis lazuli eyes, her soft, fine golden hair. When I see her glittering in the sunlight, I believe that a shadow sitting on the piano has disappeared. The hallway is silent. The moonlight shining in through windows is the only illumination in the darkness. We strain our eyes towards the sound of footsteps, receding like a distant thunder. It looks like a patrol's gone. Miri whispers and I nod. Now we can perform a ritual. Her slow fat voice reminds us that we're on our way to perform a bloody Mary ritual. And familiar dorm hallway suddenly seems terrifying, terribly eerie. <laughs> Why are we even doing this? Perhaps it's out of pity, or it's so obvious it's difficult to say. No one answers the terrified Rika as we listen carefully to the sound of footsteps finding. Suo san, don't let go of my hand, okay? Oh, that's adorable. Don't worry, I won't let go. Okay. Her hand is hot as it squeezes mine. This is not a sturdy and reliable class present, but a pathetic opposite. However, it's cute. She's adorable. I just said that. Still, she insists that she come along. None of us really want to see a ghost, but for her to come to us when she's this terrified, I think back on the events of to yesterday and convinced her to come here, albeit begrudgingly. <laughs> uh, why not? Kamikano Senpai told us not to yesterday. She said not to spread a rumour. It's no problem for you having a little fun. It's a big problem. You aren't allowed to go out late at night. And you aren't allowed to enter school at night without permission. I can overlook a little bit of mischief, but this is too much. But Suo-chan wants to go too. Ah. From yesterday's conversation, I figured the Sakis would probably want to do a ritual. A little, it is a little tempting. Of course Suo-san will be interested in it too. Miyori perhaps having heard my whisper, smiles wryly as he watches the three of us arguing. Come on, you can't be so loud. Is this supposed to be a secret? It's not I'm interested in scary stories. Rather, well, sharing scary stories or going out to a haunted house with friends has always been one of my dreams. Going out loudly at night together with everyone? We're like we were best of friends. But it doesn't look like Rika's going to be up for it. I thought so too at the time. Seeing how terrified she was by Kamikado's story, I figured there was no way she'd agree to it, but... Yeah. What is this? We're in class. Let's go together. Suo-san says she wants to do it. <laughs> oh, 
no ne, Hanata Tachi. Nika Gin, come on. Give it a rest, you guys. Shobushio. Let's play a game. Eh? What does that you got done around? We win, no, 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 well, that sounds fair. Why should I even play with first place? There's nothing in it for me. Ah, uh, she figured it out. Hey, Yagaki-chan. There's something I want to talk to you about. You keep Chan like your pal as well. What is it? It seems like one of our friends is avoiding us recently. Again? Or just no boring reason, right? Maybe. Because she would have to break school rules, and I know she hates friends. But someone who really happy she's going to it. I see. So there's acts of goodwill, as per usual. It wouldn't work on me, but you should just tell her that. Tell about people who would be helped by your actions. We're shooting for a school. You explain that. I'm sure she'll agree to whatever it is. You already said that. She seems, she seems to hate the idea, right? No matter what. Huh? That moment seems to mean she must have turned it down even when you appealed her from goodwill. I think I'd get along with this person. Since this fellow comes from the Caribbean. I tried every possible means, as far as I've seen, but tried everything to get rid of the Then... Yare, yare. Uh, again... We wake up before morning prayer, go wash our faces, and when we come back, find Rika still fast asleep, face down on my bed. I think I've ever seen my angle of a Miyori. Very attractive. We're not for this, we, we should be the greatest roommate ever. Well, it can't be helped. I have low blood pressure too, so I know where it goes. If you want to get up, your body doesn't cooperate. That's beyond me. Must be difficult for me, Yori, to understand, since she can get out of bed the moment her eyes open. She scratches her head and turns to face Rika, who's still in bed. I suppose it is unexpected. Serious top student Rika is a chronic oversleeper. Look, you gotta wake up. You don't hurry up to get dressed and wash your face, you'll be late for money fair. Okay. She's had a sleepy days, but she answers. So we know from experience we can at least get her dressed. Here you go, Miyori san. Thanks. Feeling embarrassed as I pass the uniform to Miyori, like I always do. It must become an ordinary part of our lives. I can't seem to get used to this. Oh no, I could get used to this. Hi. All right. Lift up your arms. Uh, just like a child, she has, to, she has us do it for her. Oh come on, it's no use. You gotta help us out. Miyori's coaxing words feel somehow dangerous to me. She's the one who said that since it's all girls' school, we shouldn't do anything people wouldn't misunderstand. Ugh. Don't slouch on me. Do it properly now. As I watch your interaction, I wonder if it's unjust of me to feel like there's something suspicious going on. Well, we can wake up no matter how much we shout or take her. Miyori's just helping her out so she's not late. That's what I think, but I'm still not sure what to do with my eyes while I look around the room. <gasps> What's the matter, sir Did you bump me into something? No, I just thought... Miori smiles at my desperate excuse. Yep, it was an excuse for real reason, I almost screamed. It's because I spotted a ditch go peering in for us through a slightly open door. What are you stand doing there? And Ringo too? Special marks going around my head as I try to think of what to do. Stop looking. These are my wives. You can't look, can't stay my wives. If people knew we were addressing Rika every morning, Rika would be sure to be mortified. 
I've already been caught, but it's still best to do damage control. Um, what is it, Suazan? Use your tanks too before you get too cold. Yes, you're right, but... I suddenly wonder if telling him would make a snitch. And that in turn makes me feel bad for Sasaki's. Oh, so is that what you too? That's what you want, you have to wait for Don Rika. Oh, no, 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 that's not it. Uh, maybe later. That was the most adorable line ever. She says that a huge yawn. Rika's brain seems to finally be functioning as she looks at me right next to her, and me rubbing her sleepy eyes. I'm just fine, but... Would you go, Sam? She looks nonchalantly around the room, and as the phrase would have it, her gaze lands on the door that she goes peering in from. <laughs> Screaming goes on for a while. After many excuses, her classmates were gathered to find out what the commotion is. And send them on my way. I'm not sure what kind of conversation I had, although I can imagine. But Rika will now be joining a ritual tonight. So blackmail, was it? They put a squeeze on her, didn't they? What, 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 what did you say? Oh, I was just talking to myself. Everything's fine, okay? Yeah. As I lead Rico along unsteady legs, I keep a close eye on Mr. Saki's back up, back up ahead. I was also being vigilant of our surroundings. I know I said I wanted to go, but those two seemed really excited. Yeah. It seems I've always loved ghost stories. The ones who first told me about this rumor of Mr. Saki's, so of course I'd be into it. Most of the starters are mystery of a disciplined classmate, so. Originally, there was nothing occult cool about it. Things have started getting weird ever since we talked to Yatsiro Senpai, haven't they? I heard about it from Ichigo. You want to talk to Yatsiro Senpai? Yeah, that's right. That's when we heard about the rumor. And you were told to ask her for more details? Well, I understand why someone might want to try a ritual after hearing a story like that. She smiles wildly into the hand of a mirror she bought for a ritual. I. Miyuri-san, are you interested in tales of the supernatural? Yeah. It's probably the school I went to before. We passed around the harbour manga and stuff. That's so Miyuri. That's a scenario I am, though. MV. I thought I would have grown out of it at this point, but I suppose all girls of all ages love horror. Even Yatsuro-senpai and Kamikado-senpai looked into disappearances, so... Yeah. I like this kind of thing too. Oh, I thought so. Did you say something about it, liking zombie movies a while back? And looking into this mystery with Sasaki is just like you. Uh, perhaps it's because we're surrounded by darkness, but I feel our conversation is more intimate than usual. Maybe it's a good one she can't really see my face. Oh, right. Speaking of scary stories. No, no more scary stories. Hearing Rika's voice, I realise I've been speaking too loudly. Miori and I apologise as Rika glares at us reproachfully. Because you're going like this, my dream may come true. On a way to perform a ritual, I've resolved myself to try doing more things I've seen in a mind in books and movies. Things are going to like things like going to a bathroom with friends and talking about romance and sharing ghost stories and shopping. Hurry up! It's now or never. With a heart full of hope, I step towards Ringo, who is peering around the corner, flapping a hand around in ghostly manner. God for men, religions for women. The evenly spaced lights only illuminate the area directly around them, casting the shadows into even a darker relief. I feel something lurking in the darkness of a forest, making me think of a deep sea in the black of night. 
The sound of our pattering footsteps. The only reliable thing out here is reassuring. Something feels strange. Before we left the dorm, I felt a strange exaltation of sneaking out late at night with friends, but... The first step outside, I felt the atmosphere shift from the ordinary to the extraordinary. We walk along at a steady pace with a blurred sense of reality. Like looking out of the world from inside a fishbowl. We face the academy, shrouded in darkness. The academy, usually goldy, colourful flowers, is now dipped in shades of black and grey, broken above the shadow shadows of moonlight. We stand looking at the expressionless academy. No one is around, so no so once again we set forth and slip through the campus gates. We finally made it. I'll find out what happens in the next episode. Bye bye. Hanazono,